What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And <laughs> so, you know, I got off work, made some dinner. I was like, hey, let's check out this new iDubs video. I knew it was about breathalyzers, but I didn't know what it was. And I watched it, I was just dying. I was like, I would be doing a disservice if I did not make a reaction video on this, all right? So those of you who don't know this, I am a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober for a little over seven and a half years. All right, and watching this video, absolutely hilarious. And what else What else is hilarious to me is that I don't think iDubs knows any alcoholics, all right? So I'm gonna do a little bit of reaction, share a few anecdotes and things like that. But the first thing I wanna talk about is like one of the, beautiful parts about getting sober is like we can laugh about this stuff now you know what i mean like sometimes i feel like we take this like way too seriously and although it is a very serious subject like one of the beauties of getting sober is i can look back at my past and the insane stuff that i did and laugh at it right but i wanted to chime in a little bit because i know he looks i see the confusion in his face i just want to talk about it but anyways i'll shut up and let's get started with this video how's y'all how's y'all doing Y'all doing good? Good. I like to keep up with family. Y'all, y'all, some of the, some of the real fa family. Ooh, ooh. On today's episode, we are going to discuss the dangers of inhaling or smoking alcohol. So this, this really caught me off guard. I'm like, wait, 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 inhaling or smoking alcohol? Like one of the things about getting sober, like I learned all these different things. Like, thank God I didn't know about these things back in my active addiction. Because what we're gonna see, like, I honestly probably would've tried this. I came across a video that was kind of interesting. It's this video called Drive After a Good Alcohol Buzz. Beat the ignition interlock system in your car. I've never heard of an ignition interlock system. All right, so real quick, like, I, I'm blown away that stuff like this is even available on YouTube. Like something else that I think about is like, you cannot make like drug content on YouTube, all right? Like marijuana, for example, way safer than alcohol. Way, way, way safer than alcohol, right? But they have no problem keeping videos about alcohol on here. And this is about passing this breathalyzer that is installed in your car, all right? So like Idub said, he's never heard of one of these things. But basically, after you get a DUI, a lot of times they will install these. I think this guy's from California, and I saw a lot of these. Not only was I an alcoholic when I was living in California, but I was working in a car service department, so I had a lot of customers come through who actually had these things installed. And like, don't get me wrong, like I am not judging anybody. Like I drove drunk all the time. And I thought that made me better than other people. But the reality is, I just didn't get caught. And that doesn't mean I was less than other people. I just got lucky as hell. In California, that mandate after your first DUI, you have to have a system like this. And this system is made by Interlock. And what this does is, it will not allow you to start your car unless your blood alcohol content is zero. So real, real quick. So one of the things, one of the things was when I was working in the car service department, like it was at car dealership. So you would come in, you had your car, and this would be installed on it. And we would have to have the person wait there the entire time with their car. So every time we needed to move it, they can go in and blow on it, right? So from the service drive, they'd have to blow on it so we can go and park it. Then when the technician was ready to work on it, they'd have to go walk back there, blow on it, bring it in. And we'd have some customers be like, whoa, why can't you just blow in it, Ugh, right? And we're like, we're not putting our mouth where your mouth just was. Oh no, you have to do it for five months. I was listening to the whole thing and I was like, yeah, I guess that is kind of harsh if you get a DUI and you just have to do that for the rest of your life is blow into a thing. What if you just stop drinking entirely? Seems kind of unfair to start your car, you gotta go. But it's for five fucking months. That's very reasonable. So like, one of the, one of the things is, is like for an alcoholic, the type of people who get DUIs, five months is an in, e eternity. Like if you asked me not to drink for like five days, my mind would explode. I would laugh at you like you were a crazy person, right? Sometimes even not drinking for five hours was pretty much impossible for an alcoholic like me. You might have to wait six to 10 hours before you have a 0, .0 alcohol content. By the way, I just noticed I'm reacting to a reaction video. 
That's pretty meta, right? I mean, I guess you just don't drink then. I guess you just hard up and you just have to not drink for six months. Oh my fucking God. I can't imagine a world where you don't drink every fucking day. Fuck, how am I gonna plan my life around not drinking for six months? It seems impossible. If only it was that simple, Ian. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, this is, these are complaints from a fucking idiot. Because if you get a DUI- See, it's like parts like this where I just crack up because I can see people like getting offended by this. You know what I mean? Like people really touchy by his like insensitivity towards alcoholics. But like, I'm a recovering alcoholic and I think it's hilarious. Now you have this thing in your car, right? But what do you do now that you have this thing in your car? Uh, a, you don't drink. B, maybe when you do go out and drink, you do it with people, you do it responsibly, you get catch a cab, an Uber, you walk, you take the bus, you take the train. So the idea that you have to blow into your car, like, who cares? So like, real quick on that, like, like addiction, alcoholism is crazy. There were so many times that I went to the bar and I knew I was gonna get completely blasted, right? And I would take my keys, and I would give them to my friend. I would give them to a friend and say, I am not, driving home tonight. I am getting messed up tonight, right? No intention on going home. But by the end of the night, I was wrestling my keys away from a person. Like, that's a weird thing about getting drunk and I, I, it's never really made sense to me how some people can make that plan and stick to it. But like, once I got drunk, like all bets were off and I would just do the dumbest stuff and I would drive home. And like I said, I am very, very lucky I never got a DUI. Who cares? Then about five minutes later, it asks you to do it again. And then after that, about every 20 minutes. Now- <laughs> Holy shit. It, it asks you to, to blow into the thing after you've already started because there's this suspicion that you might blow into it, get the car started, and then just ch you start chugging alcohol. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> like, to iDubs, that's crazy, but in my full-blown alcoholism, every single morning on my way to work, at six o'clock when the liquor store would open, I'd stop and get a small bottle of Bacardi and I would drink it on my way to work, chasing it with a rock star. Then at lunch, I would go to the liquor store, park my truck, and I would sit there and drink even more. Then on my way home, before I got back home to my son and his mom, I would drink on the way again. So it, for me, it makes perfect sense that you gotta keep blowing in this thing as you're driving. I'm gonna go get a good buzz, I'm gonna come back. This is turning into a sad story where he's driving a Toyota Prius and smoking his alcohol. I'm scared of this human being. I'm very scared. So like he says that's sad, but like some of you know, like I worked in treatment for a long time. I've met thousands of drug addicts and alcoholics. And yeah, like hearing this guy smoking alcohol, for a guy like me, I'm like, huh, makes sense. Like I met somebody who relapsed by drinking vanilla extract, right? Um, I've known people, or if you've ever watched Intervention, there are people who drink mouthwash to get drunk. Like this is a very real thing. So hearing somebody's about to smoke the alcohol vapors, I'm like, eh, all right. A few minutes ago, I was down in the car that has the intoxil. He got that wild turkey. That is disgusting, but it messes you up. By the way, if you're watching this, and I didn't make this clear, don't drink. My blood alcohol content is still 0.00 and then I'm going to uh, smoke alcohol or inhale alcohol vapors, and you'll be able to see that my blood alcohol content is well over 0 0.10. Your life isn't good. Your life is bad. Your life is bad <laughs> if you are drinking at home alone. Your life is 10 times worse if you have an interlock system in your car and you are smoking alcohol alone in your home so that you are sober by the time you go and use the car. Stop what you're doing. Do the opposite of that. <laughs> if iDubs knew me back when I was drinking, he would judge me so, so harshly. But yeah, like I said, I'm amazed that this content is even allowed on YouTube. Like, if you think about it, like, this content is made 
for people who have a problem with alcohol. Now, don't get me wrong. Some people get DUIs just like, okay. You know, it was just a random night. They drank, they drove, you know, whatever. But a lot of people who get DUIs and have that interlock system installed, like they have a legitimate problem. And this dude is giving a tutorial on how to get around this interlock device that is meant to save lives and deter drunk driving. Like, I don't know, hopefully YouTube does something about that. In fact, I've only taken two little hits right now and I can already start to feel it. It's amazing how fast. Oh, come on, just smoke a blunt. With all this nonsense, it sounds so tedious and annoying. <laughs> like, it's not even really a perk, the fact that it, it disappears so quickly. It's like, is that impressive? That's not impressive. That's just like no value. You're not getting any value out of your alcohol. Yeah, no, trust me. Like we're we're not looking for value. Like a lot of us, like when I when I got to my rock bottom, I wasn't even getting drunk anymore. And that's what's crazy about addiction or alcoholism. Like we just keep doing it, hoping to get the effect. Like no matter how much I was drinking, like it was insane, you know? But we do it for like that that even that tiny little feeling if we can get it. It's absolutely bonkers. Uh-oh, he didn't pass. Uh-oh, uh-oh, smoking alcohol doesn't work. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He, he passed. I recommend that you inhale your alcohol instead of drink your alcohol. No hangover, no calorie. No. I'm, a, I'm gonna agree with iDubs here, no. No, like I, although I never smoked my alcohol, I don't think you get away with not having a hangover. I just, I don't know how that works. No, I, I recommend that everyone does the opposite of that. Uh, drink your alcohol or don't drink your alcohol. It's sort of one or the other. By the way, IW should run a treatment center. Either drink your alcohol or don't drink your alcohol. Bingo. It's already quite the commitment to be bringing around like a water bottle with you wherever you go, like a reusable one. It's even more of a commitment to bring around a reusable alcohol smoking cup <laughs> that you hand over to the barkeep. Fill this up for me, barkeep. Yeah, put some Hennessy in that. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna smoke that shit. I'm gonna smoke that whiskey, brother. Yeah, like the logistics of that, it, it doesn't make sense. Like holding like this gigantic, like almost meth or crack pipe with you to smoke alcohol. But like, as far as like carrying a water bottle around, that was that was my thing. And like, <laughs> I was a hot mess because my drink of choice was Bacardi. So it's clear like vodka. And I would fill up water bottles and I would stash them in my house so my son's mom wouldn't find them. Like my genius idea, I would hide them in the cabinet, a water bottle in the cabinet where you keep like your plastic bags like from the grocery store and all that stuff. Like my thought process back then was, oh, if she just sees a water bottle up here, like she won't think anything of it. Like what, what? So yeah, I mean that pretty much wraps up this video guys. Like I just wanted to share this bit of information to you. It's kind of like a PSA, kind of like a reaction retort and uh, a little, kind of like your teacher. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. But yeah, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't watch this and not make a reaction for it. But anyways, like I said, it's interesting. And I hope some of you who have never struggled with addiction, maybe you got some insight into the crazy mind of maybe what a loved one's going through when they are an alcoholic, like we are nuts, right? And it's not an excuse to do what we're doing. Like I do, believe that everybody can get sober if they want to, um, whether it's through treatment. Uh, myself, I wasn't able to go to treatment. I didn't have insurance, no money. I got sober through a sober living house and then 12 step programs, you know what I mean? But one of the one of the reasons I wanna make this video is just to help educate people. I'm like, yeah, like this makes sense to anybody out there. Like if you are a recovering alcoholic or drug addict, like let me know if I'm crazy. Like this kind of makes sense, right? But anyways, anyways, like I said, last thing I'll say is like, we, we can't take ourselves too seriously. Like one of the things that just bums me out is just how people get all like uptight around like having fun and having these conversations and stuff like that. It's like, it's not that big of a deal. Like if, 
if iDub's video offended you so much that you, you know, plunged further into your hold of drinking, like your problems were already way bigger than that. And that's just my belief. All right, but anyways, uh, I have another really in-depth, well-researched video planned out that I'll be releasing very soon here um, about the heroin epidemic in uh, other parts of the country. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I just wanna get this one out there first. All right, but anyways, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody out there who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books over at therewiredsoul.com or the merch, all that stuff. Yeah help the channel out a lot and I appreciate you. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.